Welcome to the California garden in the month of October. We will look at all the harvests we made this month. See what's growing in the California garden. We'll look at some gardening tips and tricks. We'll look at a cool gardening product, the aftermath of the Santa Ana winds, and a lot more in today's episode of California Gardening. So let's begin with the harvest we made this month, beginning with ash gourd. Now the ash gourd or the winter melon, as it's sometimes called, was a volunteer plant that grew from the compost that we added to our raised bed. And every year I see that this usually grows as a volunteer plant. But these ash gourds are amazing. They taste amazing and they are one of my favorites to grow in my garden. Moving on to bitter gourd. Now bitter gourd or bitter melon is not one of the tastiest vegetables you'll eat. But has a lot of health benefits. Now these are relatively easy to grow in your garden. And we had a couple of plants that were growing on our trellis between the raised beds. And we got quite a lot of harvest from these bitter gourd plants. So let's look at some more harvest that we made for bitter gourds. And here is our bitter gourd harvest. As you can see, it looks amazing. Beautiful looking bitter gourd. And this is how our plant looks like. Moving on to eggplants. Beginning with the Black Beauty eggplant that is one of my recommended eggplant varieties just because it's so easy to grow and also produces these huge eggplants. So we had one Black Beauty eggplant that was growing in this container and it did give us a lot of eggplants. Moving on to the green eggplant. This is something that I've been growing for a while and this season we grew two plants for these green eggplants and green eggplants are very unique, very different. They have a very different flavor compared to the regular eggplants. And we just had two plants growing but we did get a lot of green eggplants this season. The green eggplants are also very beautiful looking. They have a very unique look. And you can see the harvest. These look amazing. And then we have the Indian eggplants. This is an eggplant plant that I bought at a farmer's market in Torrance, California. And you can see these eggplants. They look quite good. They have a nice striped appearance which makes them not only very beautiful but also very delicious to eat. And this eggplant variety is a very unique eggplant variety. So if you get a chance to grow this eggplant variety, you should. You can see the harvest, the eggplants look quite amazing. And within a few days, all the other small eggplants have also grown to quite a large size. And you can then harvest the rest of your eggplants. And then we have the Japanese eggplant. The Japanese eggplants were growing in our green stock planter. And for those of you who haven't seen the video for the green stock planter, please do check it out on my channel. This is an amazing planter. But you can see these eggplants. They are quite amazing eggplants. Very distinct taste. Very different than the regular eggplants. But it's still a great eggplant variety to grow in your home garden. You can see how nice and long they are. Very different than the conventional black beauty eggplant that we are used to. And it also has a very distinct flavor compared to the regular eggplants. And finally, our millionaire eggplant, which is one of our favorite varieties that we grew this year. Beautiful looking eggplants. Not only very flavorful, but also a lot of eggplants that we harvested from this plant. 
Now the millionaire eggplant is a Japanese type eggplant, but the flavor is not exactly like a Japanese eggplant. The flavor is more like a regular eggplant, which is what makes this eggplant very unique. Is that it looks like a Japanese eggplant, but tastes like a regular Black Beauty eggplant. And this eggplant is very flavorful. It doesn't have as much water content as the Black Beauty eggplant, and I think that's what makes this eggplant very delicious. And you can see how many eggplants we have in this one. Or two plants rather, growing in this container. So this is one very productive eggplant variety, and something that I highly recommend that everyone should try growing. And if you have grown this eggplant variety, do let us know in the comments box below. But these plants were purchased from a garden center, and these eggplants. Just look at how many eggplants are there on this this plant. It's a very productive variety, and we got a lot of harvest from this plant. Moving on to guavas. We had a big guava tree right in the corner of our home, and you can see these huge guavas. Some of them were ready for harvest, so we started harvesting a couple of guavas. And you can see here these two are relatively ripe and ready for harvest. Now this is a tropical guava plant that was gifted to me by a friend, and the beauty of this guava variety is that the seeds are very easily edible. You don't really have to bite down really hard on the seeds. These are excellent quality guavas, and we loved eating them. Moving on to hyacinth beans, we had our binding type hyacinth bean plant that was growing in this container, the whiskey barrel container, and it did give us a lot of harvest. Now the bean plant had taken up the whole trellis, and it was time for an abundant bean production from this plant, which it did. And towards the end of the season, we also were able to save the seeds of this hyacinth bean plant. This is a heirloom hyacinth bean plant, and we did harvest a lot of hyacinth beans from this plant. And at the end of the season, we also trimmed it down to about half its size, so that it can grow back and give us more hyacinth beans in the next season. Ivy gourd. The ivy gourd plant, as you have all seen every month. Is growing along the edge of our last raised bed, and we did get a lot of ivy goats from this plant. So enjoy these ivy goat harvests. And here is our harvest. As you can see, it looks beautiful, and we were able to get a lot of ivy goats from this plant this season, and they are still producing strong. And now let's look at red kidney beans. This is one of the most interesting bean variety that we grew this season, and we were just trying out growing a couple of plants, just because I wasn't sure how this would turn out. So you can see this grows like a bush bean plant. And these were just seeds that we got from the grocery store. We just sowed a few seeds, and you can see here, you have to wait for the 
bean plant to be completely dry. The pods need to dry out completely in order to harvest these beans. Now, someone commented that these beans are also very delicious when eaten as a green bean. So, I haven't tried that out yet, but I may try it out in the future. But looking at how easy it was to grow these beans, I think I will try growing more plants next season. But these are bush type beans that produce these pods. And inside these pods, you can see the bean seeds. And these are the kidney beans, red in color. And these are extremely high in protein content. And they are absolutely delicious. Now this bean is mostly grown for its seeds and not for the pod. But I think the pods are also consumed. So maybe next time I'll try to consume the pods. But this time we harvested a lot of these kidney bean seeds. Which made some delicious dishes. And now moving on to luffa or sponge gourd. As you know, we have our luffa plants that are growing on the trellis across the raised beds. And the luffa plants produced a ton of luffa this season. In this month itself, we got a lot of luffa. In fact, so much so that we had to stop harvesting these luffas and let some of these become dry so that we could get some sponge out of them, the luffa sponge out of them. So these loafers are very interesting because you can harvest them young when they're tender, you can eat them and then you can leave a few for making sponges. Once they dry, you can use them for scrubbing or washing dishes, just like you would use a regular sponge. But you can see how nice these loafers are, very well sized loafers, which gave us plenty of harvest for this season. So all in all, we got a great harvest. And now let's move on to Moringa leaves. We had a huge Moringa plant growing and this plant had really taken off. So Moringa plants need to be trimmed and we trimmed it at about 8 feet from the ground. And while we trimmed it, we got a ton of Moringa leaves. Now for those of you who are not aware, Moringa leaves are extremely high in nutrition value. And they're also delicious to eat. But if you don't like the taste of Moringa leaves, like if you don't want to eat them green, you can always dry them and crush them into a powder. And then you can add it to your smoothies, your food, any kind of food that you're eating. And it's a very good supplement. And this is how the Moringa leaves look like. As you can see, beautiful looking leaves. They have a very unique flavor when cooked. You can cook them with lentils and spices and they taste amazing. But even if you don't want to cook them and eat them, you can just leave them to dry in the sun. And once the leaves dry, you can just crush them into a powder. Now this is how we made our Moringa. We cooked it with lentils, some onion, garlic. And these were just amazing. And this is a quick recipe if you want to follow these steps you can get a very good moringa leaf recipe and now let's look at okra we had our baby baba okra growing in a container and the baby baba okra was very productive this month. 
you can see the harvest we started with a lot of harvest and okra plants will slow down during the month of october but this month we had above average heat in our area which meant that the okras thrived this month so you can see the baby baba okras they look quite good very compact plant something that i highly recommend that you can grow in containers if you're looking for compact okra plants the baby baba okra is one of the better varieties to grow we also had our jambalaya okra growing in the raised bed now we just had a couple of plants growing just to see how they do but they did quite well i think even into october the plants were still producing as you can see and these plants start producing when they are very short as well which makes them a very good variety to grow and you can see here the okras they look quite amazing we also had a nombo giant okra growing in a container and we harvested the final few okras we still left some of the okras to go to seed but we harvested most of the okras this month Now let's look at green onions. If you remember we had our green onions growing in a container and there are two ways to harvest the green onions which we'll shortly show you but green onions are very nutritious and the first way to harvest green onions is to just chop off their tops so you can use these onion greens as chives just like you would use onion chives so you can just chop off the top of the plants and the plants will still grow and they will grow quite well so you can chop off the greens use them and then just let the plant continue to grow more greens and in about 2 weeks or so you can then harvest the onion greens the green onions now the green onions are extremely nutritious way more nutritious than onion bulbs and is also one of the easiest things you can grow in your home garden so if not anything else you should definitely try growing green onions in your garden because they are just so easy to grow and they pack in a lot of nutrition value so here are all the onions that are harvested it usually takes about 30 to 60 days to get to this stage and you can see beautiful looking green onions very nutritious and very healthy red onions We also had a lot of red onions growing in our raised bed and the red onions are the bulbing kind onions that actually give you onion bulbs and you can see here once the tops dry out a little bit these onions are ready for harvest now these were planted as onion sets in the earlier part of the year late spring and this is now time for these bulbs to be formed and you can see sometimes the onion necks will be a little stiff which is perfectly fine you can let them dry in the sun or you can just cut off the tops and you can store these onions or you can use them right away if you want to store these onions though you have to dry them in the sun make sure you cure these onions but if you want to use them right away they taste absolutely good fresh onions very much unlike what you get in the store and you can see some more onions here we had a lot of onions red onions growing in this bed and most of these were ready by now and what did we do with these onions we chopped them up and made a delicious recipe where we added a filling green onions red onions and potatoes and we stuffed it into some hamburger buns and you can see the recipe here it's quite delicious and you should try it out Moving on to our peppers harvest we began harvesting our anaheim chili peppers this month and the anaheim chili peppers were almost towards the end of their 
production season or production cycle and we did get a lot of anaheim chili peppers from this one container that we had our pepper plants growing in now you can see the anaheim chili peppers they are quite good looking peppers and we did get a lot of anaheim chili peppers from this one container so enjoy looking at these harvests cayenne peppers we were growing our cayenne peppers in our green stock planter and the cayenne peppers are very nice spicy peppers they have a lot of heat and you can see they grew very well in this green stock planter and the more vegetables i'm trying out growing in this green stock planter the happier i am because i can pretty much grow anything in this container it's a very good performer you can see again these chilies they look quite good and they're growing in such a compact space this hardly takes up any space and gives us a lot of produce and here are our chili peppers they look quite amazing radish the minoves radish or the winter radish was another vegetable we were growing in our container in this whiskey barrel and we could harvest this radish several times this month as you can see we are pulling out this radish when we began harvesting the radish were a little smaller but you can start harvesting your radish when they reach this size that you see here and you will get some bigger radishes as well as the season progresses but you can see here these radishes they look amazing and this is just a few days later we were able to harvest more radish from this container and this is how they look like once you have washed them they look quite good and just a few days later you can continue to harvest more radish from the same container that we were growing in you can see the radishes have now gotten a little larger and as the season progressed the radishes did get larger but this is an amazing radish variety you can consume the greens you can also consume the radish root which is the most flavorful part the pungent part of the radish but even the radish greens they are quite amazing and we harvested a few but we still left a few for the next month So all in all this radish variety was a great success I think I am going to continue growing this radish in the raised beds as well Beautiful looking radish something that we loved eating this month And now let's move on to spinach We were growing this pale green spinach in a container and due to the extreme heat we had this spinach went to bolt and i also realized that this was sitting in a lot of shade this particular container under the guava tree so the next month i moved it out to a sunnier location in a partial shade area i remember that spinach can grow in shade but it grows well in partial shade not complete shade and you can see the spinach we are just harvesting the leaves so that the spinach plant can continue growing and this is how you can harvest spinach it just keeps coming back once you harvest these leaves and this is how our harvest looks like quite good looking spinach you can eat these raw you can also cook them 
in any case these are beautiful looking spinach and also very delicious spinach that you can use in a variety of dishes and now let's look at longevity spinach the longevity spinach is a perennial spinach variety that was growing in our raised bed and this month we moved this to a container because we wanted to make some space for other vegetables on the raised bed but this spinach variety is just amazing it's a perennial spinach variety that will keep giving you spinach throughout the year and while we harvest our longevity spinach we also trim the spinach is a good way to trim this spinach plant as well to keep it under control because it does have a lot of branches it does produce a lot of branches that make the plant very big taro root or taro plant this was our next harvest for this month and the taro root plant was growing in our raised bed it does produce a lot of tubers around the plant and you can see we are harvesting the tubers and once you harvest the tubers you could actually plant the main plant again and it will grow into a new plant new taro root plant but the tubers are the part that are the most delicious we grow them for the tubers they taste amazing and if you have tasted taro root let me know what you call it in your country or your language let me know how you use it but taro root is very popular in the united states in hawaii where there's a lot of dishes that are made from taro root so all in all it's a very interesting plant to grow you can get a lot of produce from just a few plants and this is also a fun thing for kids to do they love harvesting taro root now make sure that you use a garden fork and not a spade to avoid damaging the delicate taro tubers that are growing around and once again once you harvest these tubers you can always plant the main plant back or you can even plant some tubers back which will grow into new plants and you can look at these taro root tubers they look quite good after harvesting and all we need to do now is wash them now taro root tubers can be consumed fresh or you can store them but we're going to be just washing them just to remove all the dirt and we wash them on the raised bed so that all the dirt goes back to the raised bed beautiful looking tubers that are very delicious very nutritious and ready to be eaten you can also dry them you can see here these are the dried tubers they also can be stored for quite some time tomatoes we were growing a lot of tomato varieties and although the tomato plants had slowed down you can see some birds that have pecked on these tomatoes the tomato plants were still growing strong and producing a lot of tomatoes 
So in the month of October, I wasn't really expecting a lot of tomatoes, but the plants were still producing. Most of the large tomatoes were still producing all through October, which was really good to see. Now the cherry tomatoes were the first ones to slow down. The plant had turned yellow and brown and the production had slowed down considerably. But we still harvested a lot of cherry tomatoes. But compared to the other larger tomato varieties, the cherry tomatoes were the first to slow down. But all the other larger varieties like the salsa and the other varieties we were growing, they were producing a lot of tomatoes. We also had some chocolate sprinkles tomato on our green stock planter that was still growing well. And due to the elevation that it was getting, it was getting more light and hence grew a lot more tomatoes. And one of our other favorite varieties, the beef steak tomato, was growing on the trellis. We planted this very late in the season. But just look at these tomatoes. They are quite big, quite nice. And this is the best part about growing beef steak tomatoes is that they grow to a very decent size. And they also taste very good. They are great when making sandwiches and they can also be cooked. And this is how they look like. They are quite good looking tomatoes. Now we left a few more to ripen on the vine. And in just a few days, you can see that the tomatoes have ripened. And all of these are now ripe enough to be harvested. So although October is a month where you don't expect a lot of tomatoes, we did get a lot of tomatoes, very delicious tomatoes from our home garden. Watermelon. This was one of our favorite harvests. We had a huge watermelon growing. This is the ice box watermelon. This was growing on our raised bed. And although we didn't get a lot of watermelons, this watermelon was just amazing in taste. You can see the watermelon, it's quite decent in size and it was very nice and very delicious. Zucchini. We had our zucchini plants. These are the black beauty zucchini plants that were growing in a container. And we did harvest a few zucchini this month. So you can look at the zucchini. It looks quite good. One of the easiest varieties to grow is the black beauty zucchini. And we had a lot of fun growing it. And now let's begin with the garden tour. Beginning with the container tour. We have our onions growing in the first container. These are the green onions that we just harvested. And you can see that it's so easy to grow green onions in just a small container. Followed by the black beauty eggplant, which has been growing for a while and has been producing black beauty eggplants for a few months now. We then have our tomato plant. This was a volunteer tomato plant, most likely some cherry tomato that's growing well in this container now. Now we don't hope to get a lot of harvest from this tomato, but we'll see how much it can produce. You can already see some tomatoes here. They are growing quite well. We then have our carrot plant. The carrots are growing in this container. The germination rate is not very high as you can see. But we still hope to get some carrots. We then have our radish plants. The, the radish plants are doing quite well. This is the winter radish, the minoways type radish. And there are still some radishes to be harvested, which we will harvest next month. But you can see here the radish, it looks quite good. A lot of radish growing in this container. We then have our Malabar spinach plant that's grown quite tall. It's almost grown to the entire size of this trellis, this huge trellis. And you can see a lot of seeds being formed here. And this will produce a lot of baby Malabar spinach plants. But as you can see, there are a lot of leaves that we can harvest now. We then have our Indian eggplant. This is the pink striped eggplant. And this has been a very nice addition to our container garden. It produces lovely eggplants that are absolutely delicious and also very good looking. We have our baby baba okra that's almost towards the end of the season. I think we probably will be removing this very quickly. You can see here there are still some okras left, but it's almost time to remove the plant. We also have our mint plant growing in the corner. As you can see, it's grown quite well now. And after we placed it in partial shade, I think it has grown a lot better than when it was in full sun. 
So if you have mint plants, grow them in partial sun or partial shade. And we have our vining type hyacinth bean plant, which is also growing quite well. It did produce a lot of beans and we trimmed it down to about half its size on the trellis. And this will grow into a bigger plant very soon. You can then see the spinach plant. This is a new spinach variety that we were growing in the container and so far seems to be doing okay. We just sowed some pea seeds here. For some reason the peas are not growing that well this season. But we thought we'll try again and see how this grows. We have another variety of carrots growing in this container. Hopefully we get some carrots soon. The plants are growing very fast. We also have zucchini. The zucchini plants are now also towards the end of the season. We are not getting a lot of zucchini now, so maybe it's time to remove the plant very soon. We have our millionaire eggplant. The millionaire eggplant was a heavy producer and it still has a few eggplants as you can see, but it's definitely slowing down now. It's getting colder and the eggplants are not producing as well. Now you can still overwinter these eggplants, but if you don't have space, I'd recommend removing this eggplant. We also have the Nombo giant okra that's towards the end of its season and it still has some okra pods. But you can see most of the okra pods have died and there are just a few remaining. And we have collected seeds from the remaining okras. We have two cauliflower plants growing. We'll see how this one grows. On the other side we have some more spinach plants. This spinach plant was moved into the sun and is doing quite well now. And that completes the tour of our container garden. Let's now move over to the raised bed tour. In our first raised bed, we have a lot of onions. These are the bunching onions that we separated, the green onions. And these will be ready for harvest very soon. We have some radish seeds that we sowed. You can see the seedlings have emerged now. And it's been quite hot, so they're not doing that well. We have some more brassicas like cauliflower, kohlrabi, cabbage, and some spinach plants. And we also sowed some fenugreek seeds that have now germinated. You can see that on the right side. There are a lot of seedlings that have emerged. And this bed gets the most amount of sun in our garden. So we do have to keep this bed more watered than the others. In between the first and the second raised bed, we have our loofahs growing. You can see the loofahs have grown quite well. And they have used up almost all the trellis that is there between these two beds. We have some bitter gourd plants that are on the other side. You can see the bitter gourd plants. They have climbed over the trellis quite well and are producing a lot of bitter gourds. In our second bed, we have some beets to start with. And then we have the onions. These are also the green onions. We planted a few in this bed. We actually had a lot of green onions. So we planted a few here. And you can see here all these onions. There are some onion sets that we planted. As well as some garlic. This is the elephant garlic. As you can see we have spaced the bulbs a little far away. Because these grow into huge bulbs. And we left a couple of okra plants on the corner. I know it's getting cooler and these okra plants may not do well, but we'll see. In the third bed, we have all our brassicas, the cauliflower, cabbage, romanesco. We have a couple of mustard greens growing. But you can see the bed is completely covered and it does make a huge difference. I haven't seen a lot of insects attacking these plants yet. And the cover seems to be doing a good job. So the PVC hoops and covers is something I highly recommend for your home garden. On the trellis between the next two beds we have some ridge gourd plants growing. And you can see we finally got our first ridge gourd. You can see that on the right side it's growing on the trellis. And it has completely taken over this trellis. You can see it's grown quite large, quite dense and right into the area where the tomatoes are growing. The tomatoes are also growing okay. They have slowed down a little bit 
the cherry tomatoes are now almost towards the end of the season the salsa and some of the other tomato varieties are growing quite well they are also producing a lot of tomatoes so i don't plan to remove these tomato plants as of now but maybe i will do that next month and finally we have some more brassicas on the final bed this is where the taro root plants were growing and we now have space to plant some more brassicas now these are open they don't have any protection from insects so they do get attacked quite a lot by insects and that's making a huge difference these plants are not growing that well and we also have a couple of kale plants that we plan to remove soon because i think these kale plants are attracting some aphids and you can see the ivy gourd plant on the back i think it's grown quite well now we sowed some kohlrabi seeds here in the first area and our sunchok plants have grown quite big and i'm just waiting for them to form the tubers so that we can harvest the tubers but they have grown quite large you can see that and hopefully we get some tubers very soon now one area that i usually don't show you is flowers we have a lot of pretty flowers growing along the side of the home and these are mums or chrysanthemums you can see how beautiful they are and most of the side of our home is dominated by these flowers different types of flowers these are the white chrysanthemums again very beautiful and they say when the chrysanthemums bloom it's the arrival of the fall season and you can see some more flowers here hibiscus roses we have a lot of flowers so if you're interested in a flower tour please put a comment in the comments box below we'll definitely try to see if we can do a flower tour and now let's look at the things for you to do in your garden this month beginning with planting this is a great time to still plant onions in your area we got these onion sets from our local garden center and this is actually a harvest blend which means it has a lot of onion sets of different colors which is exactly what we wanted in our garden now the first step is to discard bad sets like these and then just sort them out and we were just checking for bad ones and then sorting them by the variety so that we could plant them and this is our raised bed and for the first time we are actually going to be using the square foot method where we mark 1 foot of area and then by just using a thread you can use anything that you want to line up the plants in the raised bed and you can just take a thread and attach it to the other side what you want to do is then split your area into squares of 1 foot each so if you're just using a measuring tape and marking 1 foot area and now for square foot gardening there are a lot of online guides which tell you how much to plant where and depending on what type for onions we are going with 4 in 1 square foot now i think when i read the instructions online it was a lot more than 4 but i think 4 is just right for these onions these are big bulbing onions and if i plant them any closer i don't think we're going to get good bulbs so you just bury the bulbs a little bit into the soil don't go too deep if you plant your bulbs too deep they won't form bulbs they'll give you greens though and then just cover up the soil We also have some beets that are growing. We just planted some beets. These were growing indoors and we just transplanted them. And now let's look at how to prepare your raised beds. The way I prepare my raised beds is to add a lot of worm castings. These are the Vermistera worm castings. They make excellent quality worm castings. And what I do is I just add the worm castings on the raised bed and then mix it in very well with the soil. Now worm castings have a lot of beneficial nutrients, beneficial bacteria, humus and a lot of other good things that your plants need. So for this sized raised bed, I usually find that one large packet of the worm castings is enough. I just mix it in very well with the soil and this really helps the soil uptake all the nutrients and then you water the area very well. And I've noticed that once I add worm castings and I water, it also gets rid of a lot of grubs in the raised bed. So I don't know what's causing it, but I do see grubs escaping when I add worm castings and water. 
We are sowing some radish seeds. These are the winter radish seeds or minovase radish. And they take quite a long time to grow, but they are absolutely delicious. Very large radish roots. And we are just going to be sowing and then covering it up here. Great radish variety to grow for the winter season. It just loves the cool weather. And we are also planting some brassicas. These are kohlrabis, cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, and all the other seedlings that we were growing indoors are now being transplanted. So finally the weather is quite cool now so it's a great time to start moving your seedlings outdoors. All your cool season crops that includes all the brassicas as well as other cool season crops like kale or swiss chard, beets and all other cool season crops. And once done just water your plants very well. Every time you plant seedlings you do need to water them quite well. These are the spinach seedlings that we are transplanting. Now I wanted to show you that although you may be growing multiple plants in one seed cell, you can still split them, you can separate them and they will grow quite well. And even if you lose a little bit of soil around the plant, don't worry too much. It's not going to cause a big difference. And even if you lose all the soil around the plant, don't worry because the roots will get established in the new soil and they will still grow well. So you can see we are transplanting all our spinach seedlings here. And spinach grows very well in raised beds. They grow quite larger actually compared to containers. And you then water them very well. And finally let's take a look at saving seeds. Now I won't elaborate this a lot but remember to save your seeds. And now let's look at some gardening products. This month we are looking at the Mars Hydro Grow Light. This is the TS1000 LED Grow Light. And this was sent to us for review. You can find more details at MarsHydro.com. It comes with a nice user manual, some attachments, some accessories to attach your grow light, and also a connector that helps you daisy chain the grow lights to each other. You have a power cord. And finally the grow light itself. You can see the LEDs on the grow light. They are quite well arranged. And we also got some stickers which was pretty cool. So you can see here the LEDs are quite well arranged. It's a great quality grow light. One of the better ones I've reviewed so far. It also has this aluminum reflective cover. The power cable is here and most interestingly this also has an accessory installed which helps you dim the LED that's the dimmer which is quite handy and I'll shortly show you why. But these are one of the highest quality grow lights I've reviewed. You can see the build quality is quite good and all you really do is connect the LED connector and the power cable and you hang your light using the accessories. And you're good to go. And these are the connectors for daisy chaining these two multiple grow lights. They have cleverly used, a, I think it's a phone line connector, the RJ connector. And here's how it looks like once it's installed. You can see the grow light is quite good. This is a smaller size grow light. This will probably take care of about 2 feet by 2 feet area. And it's dimmable as you can see. So while your plants are younger, you want less heat and less light. And that's when you can dim it. And then you can turn it on at full power later. We were growing some pepper plants under these grow lights and they seem to be doing great. And we were also growing some cilantro. This is the harvest of the cilantro plants. Now for those of you who are struggling to grow cilantro, growing cilantro indoors, under grow lights is a great way to get cilantro all year round. And we did use this grow light to grow the cilantro plants and they did quite well. I am very happy with the performance of these grow lights. These are much better than the T5 or the other grow lights that you get in your hardware store. And I'll provide link to this product as well as a discount coupon for you to buy this grow light if you want to. 
I think this is a great quality grow light, one of the better ones I've reviewed so far. Winds and wildfires. Not something we expected, but we had crazy Santa Ana winds that caused a lot of damage in our garden just before I released this video, this monthly video. You can see the devastation and you can see how strong the Santa Ana winds are. This is one of the strongest winds I've ever seen and unfortunately our Moringa tree was down. You can see the tree has snapped at the base and luckily that was the only casualty that we had but we lost one tree. We were still able to save the leaves. But look at the banana tree. It almost looks like a palm tree now with all the shredded leaves. And what's worse is that the day the Santa Ana winds blew like crazy, there was the Silverado fire in Irvine. And most of you might have already seen it on the TV. But we actually had to evacuate and leave our home for a day. So it was quite a surreal experience going through the evacuation process and the wildfires so close to us. And just as we returned home after the evacuation orders were lifted, the air quality was quite bad. The sky was yellow, the sun looked red. It was quite a surreal experience. So just wanted to give you a quick update on the Santa Ana winds, the wildfires and the fact that we are safe. Everything's fine now and hopefully we don't see more wildfires in this area. If you'd like to support California Gardening, remember that you can become a Patreon and this will give you a lot of benefits including free seed packets and a lot of other fun stuff. So please consider becoming a Patreon. So there we have it folks, that was our episode on the October episode of California Gardening. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.